I've been playing Lost Ark for about a month and I've made a first impressions video the week that it came out and compared it to ESO and said, is ESO in trouble? My first impressions with the game were highly positive as it is a game that really hit on a lot of things that I wanted in an MMO and in a game recently. In that video though, I discussed that I would make an in-game impressions video as well since at the time of recording that first impressions, I was only just starting and I wanted to get some hours into the game. MMOs are highly judged usually by its in-game content or gameplay loops and what makes you come back to play. So today I'm going to give you my first impression of Lost Ark's in-game and if ESO should be worried. Real quick, thank you so much to my patrons and YouTube members, more on that later in the video. Let's talk about the actual in-game activities. So I am now over 100 hours in Lost Ark and starting to see what the in-game is shaping up to be. So far, I have really enjoyed my experience with the in-game and there are a ton of activities to do. There are chaos dungeons, abyssal dungeons, guardian raids, platinum fields, there's a tower, there's a cube, and there's world events and every single other bit of content as well. Chaos Dungeons are essentially Diablo style rifts that you do that give lots of upgrading resources. You load in and there are three phases in these. You paste the enemies and you move to the next one. The really cool part about these is I obtained a mount from one of them and my friend obtained a skin. The mount that I have is this red wolf that I'm riding right here. I thought that was really neat and that just, that makes me so happy. These have a higher chance of dropping the mount if you get a gold portal from what we've understood from uh, online sources. Uh, these are like treasure goblins in Diablo. Chaos Dungeons are something that I have wanted in some way, shape, or form in ESO for so long. I think that every MMO should have some sort of roguelike type dungeon like the Chaos Dungeons from Lost Ark. Guardian Raids are literally something straight out of Monster Hunter that are giant monsters or bosses you kill that have specific mechanics. You also cannot see their health bar like in Monster Hunter, and these get very, very difficult depending on your item level. Some players get absolutely destroyed in these, but they are very fun to do. Now something to note is Guardian Raids and Chaos Dungeons give loads of resources after completing them two times a day per character. So what that means is you can still do these after two times, but the rewards are decreased after you do them twice on that character. The next piece of in-game content is Abyssal Dungeons. These are dungeons that are like mini raids that have very hard white mechanics when you're on the item levels recommended uh, level threshold, and you really need coordination for these. These give some really good items if you are at the item level, like I said, but eventually you will out level these, uh, and then you'll need to go to the next tier to do them uh, for better items. These can be done once a week per character so these are essentially weekly quests. The tower is a solo progression based thing that gives you loads of rewards and gets harder and harder as you go up. You can get cards, you can get uh, items, you can get uh, rapport items, all types of things from the tower. It has so far been very challenging and fun and very unique. The cube is another activity that you will get tickets for from other activities that you can do this with other players. And once you are over leveled for the first tier, it's really easy, but it gives good rewards. You're, it looks like you're in the Millennium Puzzle uh, from Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, but there are different uh, levels of that as well that can be more challenging. The other thing is Platinum Fields. This is something that you get tickets to for as well that let you go and basically do life skills in a dungeon type format in some ways. You basically have to complete goals, and if you complete them, you'll get loads of harvesting and life skill materials. The best thing to do though is to do this with a group, because I did it by myself and it was a lot slower, and I've heard that doing it in a group is so much easier. That is just touching the surface of the end game, but those are the typical things you will do in the game when you start progressing through. So speaking of progressing, how does progression work? So Lost Ark is a vertical progression based MMO game. This means that you will keep doing that content to increase your gear score to eventually do harder content to keep pushing more and more gear score. Currently I am 586 gear score right now. This is just like WoW or Destiny. However, ESO is a horizontal progression based MMO where you have an item level cap at CP 160. It never increases, so the progression is horizontal in the sense that you just keep exploring, finding new ways to play the game and fine tune your build out in a horizontal way. Lost Ark still has this horizontal progression, but it's not the focus of how you actually uh, increase your gear score, right? So how do you increase your gear score in Lost Ark? Well, the progression in Lost Ark is based around the system of honing. When you get your upgrade mats, one of the upgrade mats you get are Harmony Shards. These are ones that you get uh, at tier one, and some of the other upgrade mats at tier one that you get are Harmony Leap Stones, you get uh, Deconstruction Stone Fragments, and you get Guardian Stone Fragments. 
these are the resources that will be needed to go and hone from the uh, gear honing person. You'll see here, this is the gear honing menu. These materials are gained by doing the activities that I mentioned before, Chaos Dungeons, Guardian Raids. But then once you do them, you can take the mats and you have a percentage chance of upgrading your pieces of gear, okay? So at first, when you upgrade pieces of gear, it is 100%. So I'm not gonna do this piece of gear because uh, I don't need to upgrade this, but essentially when you're at level one of the gear, you see all the levels here, every level you go up, it gets better and better. You're only gonna go to level 15 though because once you hit level 15 on each piece of gear, you will be at tier two, and I'll talk about that here in a second. But up until about level seven or eight, roughly, you have a 100% chance to upgrade. But as you go up, in level for your gear, the percentage goes down. So right now, if I were to do these Provenance Pauldrons, okay, I have a 52% chance to get to 15. The reason I do is because I have failed this multiple times, because yes, you can fail. And if you fail your honing, you lose the resources in which you used for them. It does not destroy the item set, the item piece, which is good, but you lose your resources. This is where the grind kicks in. However, like I said, you can get up to 100% once you fail enough because, so you're not just stuck at the same uh, percentage chance. But some of you might be like, man, that grind sounds like it really sucks. And honestly, y'all, it's really not that bad to me because I didn't really start hitting a wall until about level 12 on each piece of gear. And also, once you hit level 15, like I said, you go to the next tier of in game. So that was just, that's just tier one, right? When you get to tier two, the chances go back up again, and then it scales up again. The higher you go up to like, you know, level 12, you're going to be down uh, to a lower percentage chance, right? So it's not like you go to tier two and then you're all of a sudden at like 5% chance. Now, it does eventually get to really low chances when you get really, really high up in tier three. Um, and in tier two from what I understand, but it is something that it's kind of, uh, it kind of scales with the level that you're at in each tier. And currently right now on the NA server or the, you know, Western servers, there are three tiers to Lost Ark's in game. In Korea, there is six, I believe, currently out. It's also important to note that the resources you get after tier one are different than the ones you get at tier two and tier three. So like Harmony Shards or like the Guardian Stone Fragments, those will be named something different in tier two and tier three. So make sure to use the items that you have when you're in those tiers. You also can increase your chance with certain uh, materials like this thing called Star's Breath. This is also tier based, so there will be tier two ones and tier three ones, but this can increase the chance as well if you have some of them, which you gain these from doing other in-game activities. This is where a lot of people uh, start to ask, okay, so this is where the grind really kicks in and this is where pay to win really happens, right? And and that is the, that is the case when you get more to the tier three area. It's very possible to get to tier three without paying money. I haven't paid a single dime in this game and I have over a hundred hours. And I mean, it's ridiculous. Uh, but when you get to tier three, they're fixing some things currently to where it's not as pay to win E if that makes sense. But yes, this is where having mats and people paying for mats and whales will progress farther because they're going to just buy mats. Right. But for, to be honest with you, the pay to win elements, it doesn't make me feel like I have to pay to win, right? When I'm in tier one, I don't feel like I have to pay to win at all. And honestly, from what I've understood from other people, you shouldn't really hit that wall of feeling like you have to pay money until you get to tier three, which they're actually fixing. So it's gonna be even better probably when you get to that point. And my recommendation as well is that you just take your time when you actually go through upgrading your mats because this is where people get tripped up on it and they're like, ah, oh, this feels super grindy. But really y'all, this is the meat of the end game loop of Lost Ark. This is how you progress your gear. And there are other things to do. There are tons of other things to do at end game. If you don't want to grind for vertical progression, there are life skills to do, island exploring, collectibles, side quests, various other world activities. I'm, I'm serious y'all, there, there is tons of stuff to do. Like, look at this map. I mean, there are tons of things here, tons of collectibles to do, tons of side quests. So take your time with uh, grinding up your tiers, right? You don't have to rush the end game. The other thing to note is when you hit each beginning of each tier, then you progress the main storyline and can go to new continents as well. So for me, I'm waiting to get to 600 so I can go to Yorn, right? But as someone who is nearing the close of tier one, I understand that this is the general loop of the end game, like I was saying. 
you do your dailies, you do your weeklies, you do them on characters, you do solo content, you quest through zones, you collect items for your tome, explore islands, you do housing, etc. And I'm in for it. Lost Ark's endgame really works well for me because I'm taking my time like I told you you guys should do. I'm not rushing. I don't care if I'm not in tier three and I don't feel compelled to spend money. Again, I've put over 100 hours in this game and I haven't spent a dime on this game. And even days that I only get to play for an hour, and that's been a lot recently, I still get something accomplished and I have fun in the game. And that's the key to Lost Ark, that it has found a way to make the game and the end game loop very fun and enjoyable, even if you're taking your time. Now, this is my opinion of that, but if you're like me and you like to have something to constantly work towards or go towards in vertical progression, then I think you will like the Lost Ark end game. You compare the end game of this to say New World, where there was barely any variety at end game, and that got very stale and a lot of players quit. Now, Lost Ark is a way more polished game and has been out way longer than New World, but I'm just trying to make that comparison so you understand. Is ESO in trouble when it comes to the end game? If I'm being honest, yes and no. Yes, in the sense that ESO really has to step up its game when it comes to keeping veteran players entertained with things to keep coming back to. In my opinion, the fact that ESO is a horizontal progression game really makes it difficult for people that put tons of hours into it to be satisfied once they hit burnout or do a lot of the content in the game. ESO has enough content to keep a new player busy for years, which is good. But if you want to grind and want to do end game content, once you make your build in ESO, you really just have some cosmetics to grind for, quests, exploration. There's not a gear score grind. I mean, look at me, I've played this game for years and I'm running out of things for me to kind of grind. So it doesn't pull you back in because you've accomplished what you want. I compare it a lot to a single player open world game a lot because it feels like that sometimes when you play. Because if you think about it, if you have all this content on a horizontal plane, once you reach all that content, none of that content, not necessarily all the content, but a lot of the content doesn't have depth. It doesn't have grinding loops attached to them because they're just spread out very far on a horizontal plane, which makes it not have those loops like I'm talking about. I personally like vertical progression a little bit more because it gives incentive to keep doing uh, something similar the same way over and over to get higher up in the game, right? Don't get me wrong, I still love ESO's horizontal progression, exploration, and variety that it brings, but Lost Ark is a breath of fresh air for me. Now, the other reason why ESO isn't in trouble is again, ESO is established. It has a loyal fan base and it always will be around. It also has unique qualities that other MMOs don't have like questing and exploration, housing, and multiple other things. ESO will be fine, but I do believe Lost Ark is taking away some of the player base. I hope that this gets ESO's attention and pushes them to bring new, real, high quality game systems next year after the servers have been rebuilt that can compete. I, for one, am actually really excited for the card game in ESO because I think it is going to bring something totally different to do and fresh to the game, and I'm hoping that that is a home run. Lost Ark's endgame, though, is something that I find really enjoyable. Am I quitting ESO? No, I am not. But Lost Ark will be getting playtime because it is very, very fun. Have you all been playing Lost Ark? If you have, let me know what you think of the end game in the comments. And if you haven't, let me know what you think of my breakdown and opinions of the game. Next, you can watch one of my two guides here, depending on what you're interest interested in. We have a Lost Ark beginner guide, or you can watch my mid-game ESO guide to help you after level 50. But just remember, y'all, to have faith be great, and I'll see you on a game.